Greetings. Today we're going to be changing the fuel filter on a Westerbeek 4107. This is also applicable to Perkins 4108s and a lot of other diesel engines with these canister type fuel filters. So I'll give you a quick tour of my fuel system here. I have three fuel filters. I have this big Raycor fuel filter that comes uh, directly from the tank and that goes into an electric fuel pump that has a fuel filter and this electric fuel pump then goes into the lift pump and subsequently onto the fuel filter that's mounted on the engine and it's that Wix filter that you see in the pictures here uh, that's what I kind of consider my primary or in this case tertiary fuel filter and that's the one we're going to change that's the one we're going to find on a lot of other engines Things that are common to a lot of diesel fuel systems besides the, the filters is we have that lift pump, then it goes into a filter, and then through the lines it goes into an injector pump. And an injector pump uh, fields, feeds the fuel injectors and it has a low pressure side and a high pressure side. And then it goes through lines into the fuel injectors itself. I have a little four cylinder engine here and this all become apparent when we have to bleed the system because notably we're going to get air into it by changing this filter and uh, the whole idea is to get as much of this air out before we can actually start it notably with these uh, replacement canister types of fuel fi filters it's known as kind of a messy job and i got a little hack for this and you can see with my materials uh, needed uh, i have a plastic gallon bag and you want to get a heavy duty like freezer bag for this and that's kind of the trick again a bunch of couple wrenches socket or two replacement filter kit and some paper towels will do you just to clean up the mess so we'll get started right here well, as you can see in these photos, that uh, access to my fuel filters is relatively easy on my boat here. Again, it's also fairly easy if you have a tractor, but some of you guys, I can imagine, have to do some pretty considerable bo boat yoga to access your fil fuel filter, and uh, I, I'm not envious of you guys. So kind of noted on the fuel filter housing is a retainer bolt, and that actually holds the filter and the filter bottom there uh, also what's real common with a lot of these westerbeaks and even perkins is you have to remove the bleed screw and the kind of the bleed return port from that just to be able to pull that bolt out um, so you want to be careful with that and it says you may have to remove this bolt that's the bolt we're talking about so to get started here this is all kind of real time kind of gives you a sense of how long this project uh, actually would take if you're uh, all set up and ready to go on this uh, again less than about a half day generally depends if you make a mess or not first thing we do is we turn the petcock off the fuel supply coming in from the gas tank or from the fuel tank and you want to make sure that's off otherwise uh, this can continue to run and really make a mess uh, th then I start to dive in there with my wrenches and I'm going to remove the uh, bleed screw from the fuel return out and actually move that housing out so I could actually get the uh, fuel filter retaining bolt out. Well here I'm going to show you one of my hacks that I, I learned about. It's kind of funny you know using YouTube to, to learn about changing the fuel filters and stuff. Uh, they've always made a mess put little buckets underneath trying to catch whatever fuel you could get. Uh, I was actually reading the uh, manual believe it or not and uh, they recommended using a plastic bag so yeah a gallon plastic bag slip it over the fuel filter and when you undo that bolt the whole canister and lower housing assembly uh, drops into it with the fuel that's in the filter and catches it all and it's a very slick way of uh, keeping your mess to a minimum and uh, makes this job a lot lot easier so this is the cool hack
and voila i've removed the uh, fuel filter without putting a quart of uh, fuel into my bilge and have to swab that up a little bit later and such so yeah real slick technique here so after removing the fuel filter, we want to remove the O-rings there. And we have a couple O-rings. We have a, a small O-ring that fits on a shaft. You'll see a photo of this a little bit later. And then we have a larger O-ring that seats into the fuel filter housing. Now, uh, you really want to check this out if you haven't done this yourself. Um, sometimes I see two or three of these things get jammed up in there. And you might have to take a paper clip to actually get it out. They could really be seated in there and uh, you want to make sure that you only put one in there again when replacing these o-rings and and such you want to kind of put a little film of diesel fuel on them uh, just to slick them up a little bit that small o-ring can be a little tough to kind of roll into uh, the place so uh, you want to make sure that you get that all seated and that needs to seal so when our fuel is actually coming into the filter it, it has a good seal there Okay, all this is a, a problem that occurs uh, not only with these Wix filters but also a no number of these other filters. And what we see is we get these O-ring gaskets that come in there, and you'll see maybe uh, three of these really kind of larger ones. And one fits on the bottom of the filter, and the other one, I don't know what it's for. And then there's actually one that's slightly larger, and that's the actual one we use. Uh, unfortunately, it actually fits right into the filters. You can see in these photos where it looks like an S and they're real proper like. Unfortunately, that covers the uh, fuel outlet holes. And so you want to make sure you don't do that. And uh, if it does happen, uh, when you go to start it, uh, you're not getting any fuels being supplied to your injector pump. So you want to make sure that you use the uh, right O-ring not to cover the outlet holes on these. And some people have gone to the desperate lengths of actually drilling extra holes in there so this doesn't happen. But uh, uh, that's one of the big hacks too from this is, is don't cover those, those outlet holes. Use the little bit larger size gasket. All right, now with that uh, problem averted here, what we could do is get back to putting this together and uh, kind of put the bottom housing on with its its o-ring and make sure it seats real well uh, the gaskets not seating properly is another big issue I see we'll start to get a little bit of leaking around there it gets air in the system and the engine doesn't work right now uh, another hack with the larger gasket that actually fits into the housing that's mounted on the engine um, a lot of times I'll, I'll kind of nest it in there and kind of uh, put it in there and it'll work out really fine uh, other times, uh, sometimes I have to kind of manipulate it with the housing and such. And I tend to turn the filter a little bit to kind of really getting it to set there. And then I put the retaining bolt in. And with the retaining bolt, you want to make sure it's snug but not too tight. Yeah, these are aluminum housings and you can strip them out fairly easily. So what we'd like to do is uh, get them really snugged up and then give it about a quarter turn and a nice firm hold there if you do get a little bit of uh, weeping out of these o-rings you could maybe snug it up a little bit more but don't don't overdo it on these things Hello. 
Okay, now we're on to bleeding the system, and this is going to make or break our project. This could be very simple, or it could be quite, quite difficult. And this is why I have my electric fuel pump, because it does help this. Now with the Westerbeaks, uh, we have the fuel return uh, bolt right there, and that's a good way to bleed the air out of the canister. If you have a screw-on canister, you could preload it with fuel, and you're almost good to go. Uh, a lot of folks will then crack one of the the nuts to the injector or fuel supply and wait for fuel to squirt out of that not drip but squirt out of that and then you're often good to go sometimes we have to end up chasing the the air and we'll get some stuck into the high pressure injector side of our injector pump and in there there's a couple of bleed screws and you want to be careful with those because they're often bronze and you can strip these things out so you may have to go in there and again this is where my electric fuel pump comes in handy i could uh, turn it on i could crack it and wait for the air to get out and a lot of times your engine will start it'll run for a few minutes and then it'll die and that means you have air trapped and you kind of have to chase the air out of the system again and uh at least on these engines there's no particular way that if you're going to crack one of the injector supply uh, nuts um, you want to make sure you do them all eventually, even once you get the engine running a little bit. But uh, that's how we get some of the air out of the system here. So good luck with that. Well, I hope you found this uh, informative and take some of the intimidation factor out of changing your fuel filter. So I wish you luck on, on this project and you guys have a great day. Bye bye.